Welcome to Roots and Peaks. Today's video is about how you can hike with zero pain. And the truth is, you can't. But I'm gonna give you five tips for how you can hike with less pain. The last tip is a really good one, so stay tuned for that. Before we get to the first tip, I'm gonna ask you a favor. Could you please take a second and subscribe to this channel? It helps me a ton and I'm almost to 1500 subscribers, which is incredible. Thank you all very much. Tip number one, take ibuprofen before your hike. Some people call it vitamin I. Now I know a lot of people don't like taking medicine when they feel like they don't need to, but what ibuprofen does is it reduces swelling. It's an anti-inflammatory. And that means that all the water that you're drinking during your hike is not gonna necessarily pool as much in bad spots in your body. You are not gonna feel the joint stiffness that you would without taking ibuprofen. Take the generic, hot tip, it's cheaper. So what I would suggest is take ibuprofen before you start and take it every four hours. Take a minimum dose. You don't need a lot of ibuprofen for this. But what you do need to do is reduce swelling as much as possible. Tip number two has nothing to do with birds, but this is a cool setting. Also, you might hear some sort of construction over there. Just ignore it and pretend I'm out in the woods, even though there's the ocean behind me. So tip number two is to stretch before you go. You're about to undertake a journey that might take an hour, might take all day. Your body needs to stretch out, especially in areas that it's tight. So you need to listen to your body and figure out what areas on you are tight. For me, it's my IT bands. Those are the tendons that run here. I have super tight IT bands because I have a very little bum and I have a weak core. Those are things I need to work on. But until I get to that, I need to stretch out my IT bands. Look, don't judge me and don't go through my old videos and try to see if I actually have a little bum. I mean, you can do that, but it's weird. You need to stretch before you start your hike. And sometimes you need to stretch during. I recommend stretching with a foam roller because it kicks the crap out of you. It's really, really awesome, but you're not gonna bring a foam roller on a hike with you. So I've got a hack and I'm working on a video. Once that's ready, it'll be in a link up there. Until then, I'll just tell you that there are these cork rollers that are available that a lot of people bring because they're super lightweight, but they are not as effective as stretching out as a foam roller because a foam roller has a much larger area that it rolls out. So what I recommend doing is using a Nalgene bottle if you're already bringing one and putting a koozie or a sleeve over that Nalgene bottle. Take that Nalgene bottle and you rub areas that are tight and it's gonna hurt and you're gonna hate me. But after the hike, you're gonna thank me. Also, when you're done with your hike, stretch out more. Truth time, a lot of these tips don't actually save you pain on the hike. They save you pain later, after the hike day two, day three after the hike, you're not gonna feel as sore. You're gonna say, that can, that Roots and Peaks channel, they're onto something. Tip number three is drink a ton of water. Your body is made up of 60% water. And when you hike or do any physically strenuous activity, you lose a ton of that through sweat, but also when you do physically active things, you tend to breathe through your mouth, not your nose. And when you breathe through your mouth, you lose a lot of moisture through that. So between that and sweating, even if you feel like you're not a sweater, you are losing a ton of water through your breath. But I don't know how much water I should be drinking, Ken. Well, a good rule of thumb, if you don't know, is drink half a liter of water every hour that you exercise. Some people need more, some people need less. It's a good place to start. I'd always bring more than you think you need though. If you don't drink enough water, you're probably gonna get cramps. Cramps aren't cool, man. They hurt, get rid of that pain. But for tip three, drinking water is not enough. You also have to replenish your electrolytes. You can do this in a lot of different ways, but what that means is you need more sodium into your body. Sodium is key to staying hydrated. 
If you don't get enough sodium, you're gonna be hyponatremic. Now that sounds scary, doesn't it? Hyponatremia is when your bloodstream does not have enough sodium, and that is incredibly dangerous for you and also could increase pain in your body, all throughout your body. It can also make your kidneys shut down. It's not good. So what you wanna do is make sure you drink enough water, but also replace those electrolytes that are going out of your body. Now, sodium is the key factor for this, but you also need other things to help your body uptake or reuptake that sodium. One of those is potassium. There's a lot of different ways that you can get your body to sort of take in enough sodium. I've found that the drink mixes are really convenient, but you could also just have a banana and a bunch of salt, for instance. Make sure it's good quality salt. But the one that I use right now is Element. I also use one called Relight. Um, in the past, I've used one called Noon, and there's also Liquid IV is very popular. If you wanna see a video comparing all four of those, you can click right up there. Regardless of how you're doing it, you need to drink enough water and make sure to replace those electrolytes. If you don't, you're gonna be in pain. If you do, a lot less pain. Easy as that. On to tip number four. And this one may seem a little bit odd at first, but you have to listen to your body and take enough rest breaks while you're hiking. You're doing a physically strenuous activity and you might think that keeping warm and pushing through is the right thing to do. But when your body tells you it's tired and needs a break, you need to take a break but you need to do it in a very specific way. You can't sit down and lounge on this rock for 25 minutes. What you wanna do is you wanna take a two minute standing rest. That means that you are not sitting down, you are not getting comfortable, you are just letting your body figure out that it's taking a bit of a rest and how to work with its own energy. If you do any longer than that, it's basically a waste. You might cool down, it's a little harder to get warmed up. If you do any shorter than that, you're not gonna give yourself the optimal amount of time to rest. And if you take longer, I found it's harder to get up and keep moving afterwards. You wanna take these two minute long breaks and then you wanna get up, continue on. The next time your body tells you to take a break, take another two minute standing break. Because when your body's happy, you have less pain. Woof, I really stink at skipping rocks. The most common pain for any hiker to experience is chafing and blisters. Come in here a little bit. Chafing, super uncomfortable. Blisters, they stink. In the number five spot, my tip is to take care of your skin and avoid chafing and blisters. But, but how do we do that? Well, there's two real easy options. One, keep yourself incredibly dry. When you're dry, your body doesn't rub against itself and cause chafing and or blisters. The second is to make sure that you're properly lubricated so that if your body is rubbing against itself, it is not creating friction. And when it creates a lot of friction, that's how we get chafing and blisters. So I recommend using some sort of skin lubrication in areas where you know you will chafe. That might be where your legs rub together, it might be where your arms meet your torso, and specifically where we see this a lot is in feet with your shoes, and that is forms blisters. So how do you avoid blisters? The best way to do that is to use socks that pull the moisture away from your skin. You're not gonna be stopping every 20 minutes to take your socks off and air out your feet. It'd be nice to do, it'd be awesome, but we're trying to move here with our hikes. So you're not gonna be doing that. You need socks that pull the moisture away from your skin so that it can't get saturated with your own sweat and become a place for friction. Wool socks work really well for this. Some synthetic socks will work well too. Personally, I really like darn tough socks. This tip really is gonna affect the most people in the broadest way possible. Keep your skin dry. And if you can't keep it dry, keep it lubricated, but lubricate with things like Body Glide that are designed to keep your body frictionless. To recap, 
you cannot avoid some discomfort when you're doing a physical activity. But if you follow those five tips, I guarantee you're gonna have a better hike. If you like this content, why don't you watch a couple other videos? Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.